Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem, maximum number of points with cost. This is a pretty interesting problem because to be honest, even the brute force solution will lead us down the dynamic programming path. And I'm not talking about the recursive solution, like I guess you'll see. We're given an integer matrix. It doesn't necessarily need to be a square one, but this one happens to be. The idea is that we wanna pick one element from every single row. So I guess it doesn't really matter whether we start with the first one or the last one. So I will start here just cause I think it makes more sense. So in the first row, we can pick any of these elements and we will get that score. So in the, this example, let's say we take three. The next choice is gonna be more interesting though. So the idea is that if we pick this element here, we will add a score of one. If we pick this element here, we're actually going to add a score of five minus one. We subtract one because it's one spot away, like in terms of column, like we have to go one column that way to get this element. And if we were to pick this element, it would give us a score of one minus two, because this is two spots away. So in this case, we will take this one, so we'll get a score of four. So lastly, we have the exact same choice. If we pick this one, we're one away, so we would get one minus one. Here, we're at the same one, so we would just get the score of one. Here, we would get a score of three minus one because this is one spot away from the previous row. Think of that. How do we even solve this solution in a brute force way? Well, you might go down the recursive path, like for each element in each row, we will have a choice. And technically you could do it that way, but I'm gonna show you that there's a very natural dynamic programming solution to this as well. So in the first row, let's just say we have that in memory and we don't really need to do anything there. So let's just say like, this is what we start with. The next row, we wanna know if we were to take this element, what is the max possible score we could get? Well, it's gonna be one plus something from the previous row. So the choices are this. We either get one plus one, that would be this way, picking like this as the previous element, or we could do one plus two minus one, that's picking the next element. And lastly, we could do one plus three minus two. That's picking this one because it's two spots away from it. It looks like all of these are actually the exact same. So this clearly took us one loop to figure out what the max element here would be. And I think it's just gonna be two. We're gonna do the same thing here. So we have five here. I should use a different color so you can actually see it, but five over here, that's the element we're gonna be getting from the current spot. But now the choices are this, either this, which is five plus one minus one because it's one away. And then the other choice is going straight up, which is five plus two. And the other choice here is going that way, which is five plus three minus one. We could probably pick either this or this. Both of those will sum up to the number seven. So that's what I'm gonna put here. And lastly, we do the same thing for the one that's over here. So just to go quick, it's gonna be uh, one plus three, that's four, or one plus two minus one, that's two or one plus one minus two. So it's gonna be one plus three, that is four. Now we have this row. Next, we would wanna compute the elements in this row. And we would find that we only need the previous row in memory at a time to compute the next row. We would pretty much just be able to deallocate this from memory. So we will have two variables. Let's say one is gonna be the row, the previous row, and then the next variable here, I might call uh, the next row. But just to quickly fill in the values here, we would get the three from there, three plus two, that's five, or three plus seven minus one, that's gonna be nine, or three plus four minus two, which would be five. So nine is the biggest value that goes there. And then here we would kind of do the same thing, one plus uh, two minus one, one plus seven, one plus four minus one, so it's gonna be one plus seven, that's eight. And then lastly here, one, which is the value that's over there, plus this, that's five or plus this minus one, that's seven, or one plus this minus two. Yeah, th these are the values in the last row. And now you tell me, what would we do right at the end? So now let's say this is out of memory. These are all the values. Well, we would probably pick the max value from this row, that's nine. That's the expected result for this problem. Now, if you're paying attention, you saw that the number of values we're gonna have to fill in is pretty much gonna be like one for each position in the matrix. So that's gonna be O of M, times n, let's say those are the dimensions of the matrix, for us to actually populate a single value, remember that we had to loop through the previous array. So that is gonna be m times n squared. Let's say n is the number of columns. 
In terms of space, it's not too bad. I think it's just one or two arrays in memory at a time, so that's going to be big O of n. Now, the question is, can we do better? Can we somehow optimize this runtime? And the answer is yes. If you were paying attention, you might have noticed a little bit of repeated work. It's not super obvious, though. So like intuitively, you can kind of tell that there is a bit of repeated work going on, but it's not obvious how we can eliminate it. So let's get into that. Remember what we did. This is the first row. We're trying to fill in the second row. And initially, like we can say that like these are the values here, 151. But to this, we want to add the maximum choice we could make among the previous ones. It's not as simple as just taking the maximum of all of these values. If it were, that would be repeated work that we can easily, you know, reuse for the other spots. But it's not that simple. What we did was we took this element by itself. We took this element minus one. We took this element minus two. And then among all those, we can sort of keep track of what the maximum was. We can do that like as we go. The idea is that we want for every single element to just be able to look at a single element and just reuse that. The problem is that we can't because to compute that element, the candidates are going to be different for every single one. So you're going to still have to have three choices, but we can actually split it into two elements. So imagine that like there's two subarrays here. One is going to be called left. Well, they're not subarrays. They're like actual arrays. And one is going to be called right. This is how we're going to populate it. So here it's just going to be one. And then here it's going to be the choice of two because that's the choice that this guy would get. He could pick two itself, or he could pick the value here, minus one. And so we're gonna use the sum that's here, and that'll make sense when we get to this point, but so it's gonna be one minus one. So what's bigger, one minus one or two? Well, obviously two, so that's the choice here. And then for this guy, this guy can pick between just three itself or the previous sum minus one. The reason at this point why we don't have to look at all of the elements, the reason we only have to look at two is because this number represents the max among the last two choices. But those two choices were made for the element in this position. So the only thing that we would have to do from here is just subtract one from it because this is the max choice that this person has. So if we wanted to make that choice, though, we would have to minus one from it because we are a distance of one. In a way, like this is like double dynamic programming. We're reusing rows and we're reusing elements as we kind of populate this array left to right. So here the max choice would be three. Now keep in mind that these values only tell us what's the max sum that we could pick from this that would include this choice, this choice, and this choice. Well, that's for this spot. But this guy, this only includes the choices from here and here. It doesn't consider the choice from there. Same thing this way. It only considers if we were to choose here, but it doesn't include the choices from there and there. So this was named left because we're filling them in from left, like this and this and this. So let's do one from right, which is going to go in the opposite direction. You know, maybe we should swap these names. I don't know. That's up to you. But here, it's just going to be three. So we can actually just leave that as is. And then when we get to this position, we're going to say, okay, either I could pick the value here, which is two, or I could pick three minus one. They're both going to be the same. So it's two either way. And the value here, I could either pick one or I could pick two minus one. So that's going to be one again. So this time they were both the same, but that's not necessarily always going to be the case. Uh, to compute the values that go in this row, we would just take the maximum of these two. They're both one in this case. So we would get a two over here. For this, same thing, max of those two, we would get a seven over here. Same thing here, one plus three, that's gonna be four. Let's continue from the next row. So once again, we are going to create these two temporary arrays, which I call left and right. This one will be built going this way. This one will be built going the other way. And so this time it might be a little bit more interesting. So here we have two itself. Here we have seven, seven, or this one minus one, well, seven is bigger. Okay, so this one, which is four or the previous one minus one, uh, that's gonna be bigger. So we'll have six, which is seven minus one. This is basically saying that this guy, if they had a choice, they could either pick this element or they could pick the maximum among these. That value is already stored here. Seven is the maximum among these. So what choice should we make? This one or this one minus one? Well, it's gonna be six. So that's what the value here represents. The value here represents the max choice that they could make from this and this. The value here represents the max choice of just this. So now going the other way, we want to include the other choices. This guy could also have chosen that. This guy could have also chosen that. So um, we here 
we'll just initialize it with four because that is the sum from here. So that's four. Here, we can either pick seven or we could pick the value to the right minus one. We will definitely pick seven. And here, we could either pick two or the value to the right minus one. That's what we're gonna do, which is six. So now, to know the value that's gonna go here, we just add to this the maximum of these two. It's six, so then we would get nine over here. Same thing here, one plus the max of these two, that's gonna be eight. Same thing here, one plus the max of these two, that's also gonna be eight. So this way, we can populate each row by going through three passes. This is one pass, another pass, and then actually populating the values. We could get that down to two passes if you wanted to. Like as you're computing the second row, you could have just taken the max of that and just added it to this one rather than building this row itself. But that's not really an optimization that's going to change the overall time complexity. So I'm actually just gonna ignore that. And we've gotten the time complexity though down to M, which is the number of rows, and then three passes, which is three times N, but that doesn't change the overall time complexity, which is M times N. Space complexity is just the length of a row, which is O of N. Okay, now let's code it up. So as per usual, I'm just gonna get the dimensions of the matrix first. So the number of rows and the number of columns in an individual row. And then we're gonna go row by row. We're gonna start at the first row that we're skipping in the row at index zero. But we are gonna store those values in a variable, which I'm gonna call row. We're not really creating a copy of it. We're just doing this for convenience. But now we are actually gonna create a copy of the current row that we're at. You don't have to do it, you could overwrite the matrix, but I think it's generally better to not do that. So I'm gonna call this next row. This is what we're ultimately gonna be computing. And I'm initially just gonna set it to the current row and create a copy of it. Now I'm also gonna create those left and right rows that I talked about. So both of them are gonna be the same. So I'm just gonna set them to this. Make sure you do create a separate row for each. You don't want them both to be the same row, like the same reference to the same row. So this is how you can do that in Python. This is like what the general formula would be, let's say for left. We're gonna go column from left to right. We're gonna go from one to columns because we're gonna do this the value we're gonna put at the current column is gonna be either itself, like the value in the row at that column, which we can get from the previous row. Remember, that's how we're computing this left row. So from the previous row at the same column, we can get that, or we can say what we already have in the left row at index C minus one. So that's why we are starting at column one. If we started at column zero, this would take us out of bounds. And Python actually wouldn't, which is gonna be hard to debug. So make sure to do this. And not only that, but the value here, we should minus one from it because it is at like a differing row from this column. And it's a difference of one. So that's why we do that. But you might see the problem here. We initialize this left row with all zeros, but the first value at index zero should have been initialized to what? It should have been initialized to the value in the previous row at the same index. Remember, this whole left row is being computed based on the values in this one. So here, let's do row at index zero. We're gonna do something very similar um, to fill in the right row, just going in the opposite direction. In Python, you can do that like this for a range um, at the last index, except not the last index, column minus one, nope. Instead of doing column minus one, we're gonna do column minus two and we're gonna go up until zero. So for here, we put a negative one and then we put a negative one for the step. That means we're decrementing by one each time. And then right is gonna be column. It's gonna be the max of itself. Once again, row at that column and right. This time it's gonna be looking at right at column plus one because we're going in the opposite direction, remember? And here we're still gonna put a minus one though. Now from this, you might see that since we're not starting at the last column, we should initialize the value at the last column. So at right, columns minus one should be whatever it was in the previous row at that same index, columns minus one. So this is almost the whole code. Now to actually populate the next row. So just like we did, we're gonna do this. You could do it in either direction from left to right or right to left. 
I will do it like this. So the value at next row, we wanna know what we should add to this. We already have the original values from the next row, but what should we add to it? Well, we wanna to add to it the maximum of the value from the left and the value from the right at uh, index C. So let me make sure to add that there and there. So this is pretty much the entire code. Just don't forget to change the row to the next row before you do the next iteration of the loop. And then at the end, we're just gonna return the max value in the row. So I'm gonna go ahead and run this. And as you can see, it works and it's pretty efficient. If you found this helpful, check out neatcode.io for a lot more and hopefully I'll see you soon.